go. What's going on everybody? So if you went to my exam review yesterday, uh, someone asked about doing problem number 21 on the last problem set for chapters 14 and 15. And uh, we didn't have enough time to fully complete it, so I told everyone that I would uh, make this video um, that, so, to explain it. Uh, so if you missed uh, the exam review entirely, you'll still be able to figure out how to do this problem. And uh, if you were there, I didn't even explain it. Um, so this is me explaining it. Um, hint, hint, this will probably be on the exam. Um, I can't say for sure because I haven't seen the exam, but um, a, uh, a very trusted source uh, told me it might be the professor. So um, let's do it. So it's number 21 on the last uh, problem set again. Um, and it reads, Vinny is considering the purchase of a European call option written um, on the stock with the initial price of $20. Suppose the price of the stock can equally, um, or can equally likely go up or down 10% in each quarter. How much will we have to pay for the option with a maturity of six months and a strike price of $21, given that the effective annual interest rate on a risk-free asset is equal to about 12.5%? Please provide the value of the hedge ratio for each node of the tree. So, um, first let's make the tree. So, uh, they said that it's gonna, it's a, a six months to maturity and it can go up or down each quarter. So that means we're gonna have two different periods, two periods, uh, each of three months. So it starts at $20. It could go up 10%, 22, or down to 18. And again, from the 22, it could go up in the second quarter uh, to 24.2 or down to 19.8 and from the 18 it could go up to 19.8 or down to $16.20. Okay, so there's a couple different formulas that we need uh, to solve this. The main one being price of a call. So price of a call is equal to stock, the stock price times the hedge ratio, delta in this case, um, plus uh, B, which is the risk-free rate. Um, or it's a calculation sort of of the risk-free rate, not exactly the risk-free rate, because you, so you can't just plug in the 12.55. Uh, um, so, next formula we need to know is the, the hedge ratio formula, which is just uh, the price of the uh, call if it goes up minus the price of the call if it goes down over the price, or the, yeah, the stock price if it goes up and the stock price if it goes down. Last one being B which is equal to um, the price of the call going up minus uh, the stock if it goes up times delta or the hedge ratio all over the rate. Um, you can, so I, I, in this case I use uh, the, call, the price of the call going up and the price of the stock going up. You can use price of the call going down and price of the stock going down, but you have to make sure it's consistent. Um, so either use up and up or down and down, but if you mismatch them, you're gonna get wrong numbers. So, uh, we're gonna have to do kind of the same process three times to figure out the answer to this uh, problem. So we're gonna go backwards. So we're gonna do, we're gonna figure out the price of uh, the call for, uh, you know, after three months for 22 if it goes up and for 18 if it goes down. And then finally, we'll figure out the price of the call at the beginning of both periods. So for the first one, Let's figure out the hedge ratio, or delta. So uh, what's the price of this call gonna be? What's the payout gonna be if the call goes up? Um, so it means uh, the price of the stock is gonna be 24.2. So to figure out what we'll make, we have to uh, subtract the strike price, not the stock price, but the strike price, which is $21, as it says in the, um, uh, as it says in the problem, uh, from the 24.2. So, the, our payout is going to be $3.20, which is just the 24.2 minus the $21 uh, strike price, not stock price, remember. Um, let's not worry about that. And then um, if it goes down, it'll be 19.8, which is under the strike price, so our payout is going to be zero. So the price of that call is going to be zero. All over the stock price, uh, if it goes up, minus the stock price, so it's going to go down. So just the 24.2 minus the 19.8. So if we calculate this out, we get 0.73. So that'll be the hedge for the first one. And next, we'll just plug all this into this formula. Again, make sure that the call price and the stock price are consistent, whether you do up or down, 
So let's do up. So call if it goes up is 3.2 minus the price if it goes up is 24.2 times the 7.3 that we just solved above. So this is all over the rate, which is just one plus uh, the uh, interest rate. So remember that they gave us annual interest rate and we're solving for uh, one quarter or three months. So we have to divide the 12.55 by uh, four, since we're breaking it up quarterly, to get, it's gonna be about 3%. Um, I, I'm, I haven't calculated it out. Um, do so when you're on the exam, obviously but uh, just for, for this demonstration purpose, it doesn't really matter. So we'll just use 3%. Um, so it's one plus uh, the 3%, 0.03. So this equals out to negative 14.04. Okay. So now we can plug all this into C. So C equals uh, the, I guess I just flipped it around. So the ratio, times the price, or the uh, yeah, stock price, 22, minus, or plus, I apologize, B, which in this case is negative anyway, uh, negative 14.04. Okay, gives, this gives us the price of $2.02. .02. So um, remember that number. And I'm gonna erase this so I can do the next one and the next one. But obviously in your exam, he wants to see, um, I mean, both numbers are preferable. He wants to see the, the uh, hedge ratio as it set, states in the actual problem. So, so 2.2, those are the prices. We'll put it down here for later. Hold on. Okay, so now next, let's do two. So two is gonna be the exact same thing. So what's the call, if, what, what is it if it goes up? It's 19.8, uh, so what's, what's that minus the strike price? Uh, that gives us a negative number, which means we're not gonna get any payout, which means it's zero. If it goes down, also it's under the strike price, so that's zero. Doesn't really matter what the prices are, this is gonna equal zero. So for B, it's gonna be uh, the the, call, the price uh, of the call if it goes up, which is zero, um, minus the whatever the stock price is, times the delta, which is zero. So this again is going to be zero. It doesn't really matter what it is. Um, plug into this formula. Uh, what's the what's anything times zero plus zero equals zero. So for the second one, that's gonna c is gonna equal zero. So sorry I went kind of fast on that one. Um, but it makes, uh, you can do it, you can solve it out, but it's just going to equal uh, zero in the end. So three is gonna be the last one. This is gonna give us the actual answer uh, to the problem. Let's figure out the delta. So that's gonna be the uh, price of the call option if it goes up, 2.02, .02, which is what we figured out in one, minus the price of the option if it goes down, which is zero, which we just solved as well over two prices, so that's 22 minus 18. What does that give us? That gives us 0 0.505. Solve for B. So what's the price that goes up? Um, it's 22 or 2.02 .02 minus the stock price, which is 22, multiplied by the hedge ratio, all over the uh, one plus our rate, which is about three. Again, we're using approximation for that. So what does that equal? Negative 8.83. So now we plug this into our first formula above. C will equal the price, which is $20 times the delta or the hedge ratio um, plus negative 8.83. This gives us $1.27. So that is gonna be the price of this call option um, for a uh, maturity of six months. So again, um, things to consider, I guess, making sure that these, these stay consistent. Um, and I guess, I mean, I wanna say take your time on this because there's a lot of room for error when you're calculating all this stuff out. 
but um, it's, a, it's a very time intensive problem. Um, so try practicing it a couple times, maybe change the numbers around and uh, keep, you know, just practice it a few times so you get good at it so that you can just beast through it on the exam. Because um, if it's anything like the last exam or the uh, exam I took or my final when I took the, uh, the class last semester, um, this was definitely on there and it took a long time. Um, and it's usually near the end when you're already kind of strapped for time. So uh, good luck for all those who have their exam on Monday. Um, I will have, if you email me or text or call me, that's preferable, you know, I'm terrible at answering emails. Um, I will have some time Monday morning uh, for office hours if you have any questions. And then um, for everyone on Wednesday, I have a little bit of time Tuesday evening. Um, and then I don't, know what, I don't know what time your exam is, but I'd be free to help before the exam if it's not at 7.30 or something ridiculous. Um, so yeah, good luck everybody. And it's been a great semester. Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa and Hanukkah so we can keep it politically correct. Thank you. Thank you. Bless